Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Uh, I'm back up. My uh, restriction for having an opinion uh, has been lifted. Uh, aren't you glad we live in a, uh, a democracy where free speech is um, supported and defended by the government? But uh, anyways, let me, I don't want to get too political on this. Uh, let me just uh, get into this. <laughs> I actually got a, a whole bunch of... Um, I mean, I've collected a lot, but I don't want to make this uh, first um, video on my return too long. So anyways, let me just uh, get into uh, what I'm going to show you in this video today. Uh, first is um, some interesting images, video images of uh, strange formations on the moon. This one here. also have this one here, which seems to show, I don't know if it's a craft or a base uh, on the edge of a of a crater in this video uh, same UFO mania guy and uh, let's see actually no, that was not it. oh yeah so now this video here is um one that's uh, been out for a while um it, uh, I'm pretty sure I've shown this before, but this um, happened uh, a few months before 9-11, and it was used during a, a sci-fi um, in between their commercials. And it was, yeah, some, I mean, the story is a woman, and uh, she was, I guess, uh, something to do with having an affair or something. I don't know the exact story, but uh, she didn't want her name shown. But anyway, they took a helicopter ride in uh, New York City, and um, they spotted a craft flying through the or floating through the buildings and then it actually um heads towards them it's kind of wild uh let's see and also I've, i'm pretty sure i played this video too but again you know if um you're regular if you listen to my channel on a regular basis every now and then okay because i have new subscribers you know that um uh you know because there's so much information out there again and not everyone happens to see everything occasionally i will um, replay certain videos that I think are significant, um, especially, you know, within the uh, whole uh, UFO world. But for sure, this is, um, you know, one of the, I think, um, I think, yeah, this is one of those videos that I think everyone within the UFO community should be aware of. But it was supposedly a broadcast by this person named Ver Verillion, in 1977, who claims to, um, you know, be an alien um, watching, it's been watching our uh, our world and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure back in those days, 1977, the uh, the ability for just anyone to be able to hack into a, a, a broadcast signal like that um, would have been very, very difficult, but not impossible. So, so yeah, I, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I have my reservations about this video, but um, you know, you know, of course I'll have the links to all this stuff so you can check it out yourself. But uh, we'll listen to a little bit of it. Um, let's see. Also have this video here of um, this new phenomenon that's been happening a lot lately of um, like a light show being uh, being shown in the clouds. Uh, let's take a look at that. And uh, let's see. Here is an old video. Um, yeah, I can't believe it didn't get that many views, but it's um, of uh, some craft over uh, Lake Erie. Also have this one here. Hold on one second. Yeah, this craft here um, shows a lightning bolt. I mean, there's a craft in, in, in the clouds and, uh, you know, some people are saying, is it in there to uh, collect energy or something like that. We'll look at that one. Also, this here, uh, this is a long 15 minute video, but it's uh, short clips of a uh, NASA astronauts who mention that they're being followed or that they spotted a, an unidentified um, aircraft or UFO. And I think the um, the code word for any any time they spotted a UFO was Santa Claus, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, anyways, um, I also got this from Reddit. Curious phenomenon in Venezuela from 1886. 
So, you know, again, it goes back to what I've been saying that um, these crafts and these sightings have always been taking place. You know, it goes back over 5,000 years. You know, documents written in Latin, documents written in Greek, soldiers describing seeing these crafts. So, uh, yeah, the idea that, you know, that these things are coming from outside, I mean, I'm sure some of them are, there's no doubt, okay, because there's so much life out there. But um, there's definitely been a, a an effort or a program to brainwash us into believing that these crafts are coming from outside of you know outside of our solar system or just um you know a lot of times they don't even want you to talk about the occupant you know they just want want to want you to just co concentrate on the craft oh look it's the craft it's a uap uh, we don't know where it comes from or you know they try and get you to think that oh it, it could be russian or it could be chinese or then the you know the, I think the most ridiculous one is um oh they're from the future but anyways um yeah, so we'll take a look at this. And then also uh, this article here, bizarre case of military encounters with strange aquatic humanoids, which, uh, you know, again, it just proves that we are not the only sentient beings on this planet. I know that, you know, we've been um, brainwashed and conditioned to believe that and to believe that, you know, that, that, that this planet has only been occupied for the last 5,000 years, you know, by, by us, when the reality is that, um, you know, there's been multiple multiple advanced civilizations or you know and even primitive civilizations on this planet that that still exists and you know sometimes they got wiped out by some you know cataclysm but um yeah but you know but again we're not the only hominid species you know there are other um uh again we're, we're homo sapiens sapiens but you know there are other hominid species that live within our society that um, you know, we would probably they may be even your neighbors. The, the people on, on TV that that show themselves, some of them are called Homo capensis. Um, again, but we're not supposed to know about them. Um, you know, there there are little beings like in the Atacama Desert. Um, there are four different species. At least again, this is based on you know the people who are actually doing the research. Uh, four different species of Bigfoots. Um, and you know, and, and these these beings in the ocean, strange humanoids. What's up, King James? Yeah, YouTube pff, finally back. But anyways, yeah, you know, here's the thing. My thing about YouTube, you know, YouTube is a, is a private company. They can do whatever they want. If they want to ban people for, you know, having an opinion, whatever. But I, I don't think it's YouTube um, that's doing it. You know, I'm pretty sure similar to Twitter. Um, you know, Twitter, we find out that uh, Twitter has a bunch of uh, ex-intelligence, FBI, CIA, um, people working for them. I'm sure I'm sure it's the same way um, at YouTube. You know, they're, they're, it's the government um, censoring in the guise of a, of a private company, which is completely wrong. But and, you know, again, I don't want to get too political. I'm, you know, people come here to see um, UFO videos. But again, you know, if I'm I'm watching my neighborhood burn up. I, I, I can't just sit back and pretend like it's not happening. Um, what's what's really going on? The, the from one aspect of you know from the bigger picture is um, the United States sovereignty. They're trying to destroy our sovereignty. They're trying to destroy the United States of America and the whole idea of individualism and um, and freedom and democracy and you know and gun ownership and the right to um, to express ourselves they're they're trying to um destroy all of that so that the world economic forum can take over i mean it's already happening they're already coming in with their vaccine passports you know restricting people's movement it's the whole um you know uh, cook a frog or, or throw a frog in a cold pot and slowly turn up the heat and they won't know that they're being cooked and that's what's going on right now that's why our, our borders are, are being left open so that, you know, again, I, you know, I mean, I live in LA, you know, I mean, I have um, a lot of um, uh, Mexican neighborhood, you know, neighbors, and you know, they're good people. But what, what, what our quote unquote leadership is doing is they're, is they're allowing people to come into this country and so that then eventually they can say, oh, since there's too many uh, immigrants in this country, you know, the United States is not the United States anymore. It's all part of, uh, you know, the one big, they're going to try and probably include Canada. 
um, and just say that it's one big giant North American province and all of our rights and and freedoms are going to be um, taken over. But anyways, I, I don't want to get too far into that. Let's uh, let's go on to these uh, these UFO videos. Let's just um, forget about uh, world domination for a second. Anyways, let's uh, check out this uh, video here of some strange, um, you know, objects that were seen uh, on, on the surface of Mars here. Let me go back to where, uh, yeah, you can actually, you know, this is where he's showing it, where it's at. Bart, can you do or go live on any of the uncensored video formats? I've noticed. Yeah, you know, I, I just started on Rumble. Um, right now, um, I'm trying to transfer you know, um, all my YouTube videos over to Rumble and it's just taking a long, long time. I think because I have over 700, but eventually, you know, I think that's what's gonna end up happening is, um, yeah, I'm gonna just keep my mouth zipped until everything gets transferred over. And then, uh, yeah, once, you know, once I know all my videos are on another platform, I'll, I'll, have, I'll be a little more, uh, uh, I'll feel a little more, a uh, less weight to to talk freely. So yeah, I gotta I keep keep it under wraps until <laughs> until everything moves over. But yeah, eventually I'm, I think I'm gonna have to go over to Rumble. But you know, again, it there's just not enough um, traffic going to Rumble though right now. But anyways, uh, let's check this out. Uh, let me just jump ahead. Okay, so here, this is where they're going to show you. You can see, look at this. There's no way this is um, something that um, happened uh, by nature. Even this over here. Yeah, so there's definitely, you know, something going on up there. And, you know, like I said before, even, um, uh, let's see, Bruce Cizal, there's a guy that has a YouTube channel, Bruce Cizal. He has his own telescope, right, that he points at the moon, and he's constantly catching all kinds of traffic uh, entering and exiting the moon. So, yeah, so the idea, again, you know, you know, it, it, and during my time off, you know, I, I started going, um, again, I mean, I, I do that anyways. I go to uh, all these other, like, spaces chats and you know i go to other um ufo um channels and i'm just amazed that still the number of people that are still like crying about disclosure or um even you know some people who still come on and and say that oh this is nothing or that uh, this is just a figment of people's imagination or or the idea that oh these are all just um they're they're us from the future. Yeah, look at this thing here, right? Look at those straight lines. This is on the edge of a moon crater, and it looks like um, you know, this is some type of uh, some structure. You know, and I've said this before about. Like um, when I used to look for um, like like strange objects on the ocean floor, right? I was always looking for what I thought a structure would look like, you know, like a square rectangular, rectangular building, something that had, you know, right angles. But then I got, I got to remember, like I'm, I'm thinking with my, you know, with my monkey brain, um, like, yeah, if, if, if I'm going to look for structures that are created by an advanced civilization, I cannot think like a human. I have to think like, you know, like a species that has existed for millions, if not thousands of years. And maybe, maybe you know, their um, design or their aesthetics aren't the same as, as us. They, you know, they must design things differently. Uh, but anyways, yeah, there's just definitely, you know, something here on the moon here. But anyways, um, 
let's uh, let's go to this other video here. Oh yes, okay. Now this is a this is a quick thirty second video. This is from yeah, this is from you know before the uh, the twin towers were um, were uh, crashed into. But anyways, check this out. Tate by sci-fi. Did you see that? Now, I think that this was um, U.S. military. I think this is most likely the Sportster model. But, you know, watch. You can see uh, when she gets to, let's see, right when it pops out behind the building. Right here. You know, watch how, you know, watch the thing. It just, it, it goes from here and it just pops over to, you know, where it wants to be, which is very similar to how um, Bob Lazar, when he talked about the um, the gra gravity amplification systems at the bottom of the Sportster UFO, you know, he says they, they point those uh, gravity generators to where they want to be. And it's sort of like it, those generators will pinch, sort of like pinch, you know, pinch the, uh, uh, the time space where they want to go, draw it to the ship, and then, and then it just rebounds, the ship rebounds back like a rubber band. Anyway, let's just check this out from here. It's over there. Wow, look at that contrail that it left. Amazing. Anyways, uh, link will be in the uh, description at the, uh, at the end of um, this live stream. Now, again, this is from 1977. This is um, the Virilion broadcast. Which was, I think, this was the BBC, and um, apparently, this yeah, this being who calls himself Virilian uh, breaks into this broadcast and makes this announcement, you know, saying that um, that we've been watching you from afar, and uh, you know, and, you know, I, and it's basically the the same message that were given to all of the school children um, during all of those, you know, those landing, like at the aerial school. Landing the Puerto Rican, the whales, um, the, I think it was in Australia, right? I, you know, all those different similar landings where a UFO landed in, in a schoolyard, and and you know the, the little grays told told the little students the same thing that uh, that we need to take care. We're supposed to take care of this planet, and we're not doing a good job. But anyway, let me play a little bit of this. Offer to negotiate an internal settlement based on one man, one vote. But, he says, there are conditions. These include stopping the execution of all captured prisoners of war, allowing people to take part in the negotiation, being arrested. In Australia, Mr. Perry Knapper's prisoners are still in the line of this for the high court decision, which did the demand of the play in the past. This is the voice of the law. guys can can hear that i mean it's definitely kind of muffled so i'm again i'm gonna stop it right here uh it's you know very interesting talks about how right that, that the things that we are doing on our planet is affecting others and he says others around your world uh again i'm you know i'm i yeah you know, i remember when i watched this i had no idea did the, or, or, or i yeah, never the the thought that we share this planet never entered my mind you know during this time i remember when i first 
uh, became aware of this video. But, you know, again, now understanding that, uh, that we aren't alone, we know, when I look back at some of these videos, it, uh, it gives me a completely different perspective. But anyways, um, I'll put a link to this in the uh, description after I finish this live stream. Definitely check it out. It's uh, very interesting. Again, you know, I've said I have no idea whether or not it's it's legit, but I'm positive in 1977 for, for you know for for some Joe Schmo to be able to break into a, a national broadcast signal would have to have had uh, some pretty sophisticated and expensive equipment. You know, in order to be able to do that again, now I'm sure it would have it, it was possible, but it's just highly improbable. Nowadays, you know, again, you know, we're living in the 21st century. It's it's a different story, but yeah, 1977 for just any Joe Schmo, you know, even even a, a motivated Joe Schmo still would you know you would have to have the right equipment to be able to do that. And back then that type of equipment was was incredibly expensive and uh, hard to come by so yeah so if, if yeah that would be one reason why that i would think they would you know it'd be legit so to say because it would have been so hard for someone to do but not impossible but anyways uh let's go to this video here this is a um a new phenomenon that the uh, jaime masan says uh, you know, is that they, they are picking up a lot now. This is something that um, he uh, ha hadn't seen before, but it's this, you know, it's this light show that that these um, balls of light, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll call this a disclosure dance too, because there's still, no, I'll call this a disclosure show instead of a disclosure dance, because it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing how, you know, because it's, it only happens on cloudy days, and it's happening a lot. But anyways, check this out. Yeah, I think they're, you know, I think they're trying to, I think, I don't know. Is this, you know, is this all part of them trying to, you know, them letting us know? Because they realize that our government isn't, isn't ever going to, um, isn't ever going to, you know, acknowledge their existence. Uh, let's see, this is an old video. I don't know where it's from. It's just from four years ago. But uh, it says, you know, unidentified UFO on Lake Erie. Disappear. It seems like these they, they were um, uh, moving across. I don't know if they were sailing or boating across the lake, but uh, you know these things have been seen coming in and out of our lakes and out of our oceans for thousands of years. Again, which is why I don't understand why people are still keep saying that oh, you know that they're uh, they're coming from other planets or that uh, they need the government to tell them that this is real. Anyways, let's check this one out here. Uh, this is in uh, Hungary, UFO hit by lightning strike in Hungary. Or is it the other way around? 
the UFO pulls a lightning strike to itself since it looks like the UFO is waiting for the right moment to be connected with a lightning strike. It is said that UFOs use the lightning strikes as an energy source. The UFO seemed unaffected by the lightning strike. Take a look. Yeah, you know, this isn't this isn't a one-off, right? This is uh, something that that has been seen multiple times by multiple people over multiple years. Hey, uh, Fiddly, uh, where have I been? I was on um, YouTube restriction because I had a an, an opinion about the vaccines, apparently. And here's the thing, and you know, and I don't actually, I don't think it's YouTube that takes me down. I I believe that it's um somebody reports. Someone, one of the, you know, a listener must report the video as having medical misinformation and then YouTube just agrees with them. You know, any, anytime anyone does that. But yeah, I don't necessarily believe it was, you know, necessarily like, yeah, because there's no way YouTube, you know what I mean, could, could peruse a gazillion videos that people are, you know, are posting every single day. Uh, hey, thank you very much for that super sticker. Um, but yeah, but that's the reason why. So yeah, there was a two week um, ban or yeah, two week restriction. But uh, let's see, let's check out this video here. This is a, a 15 minute video, shocking audio of astronauts reporting UFOs back to NASA. Yeah, same thing. Um, I, I, all of these videos, you know, out there showing that NASA knows that they're out there. Um, you know, the, the, the people that, that um, run the International Space Station, all the videos that they have of, of crafts that are checking them out. So again, I still don't understand how the mainstream media or how even NASA can, can put up this, this charade, you know, that, that they don't know what's going on or that they're just now looking into it. Anyways, uh, check this out. Yeah, no, yeah, they call it a bogey. Now, from my understanding, within the uh, the pilot community, right, you either have a bogey or a bandit. A bandit is is a is a is some something that can be identified, and a bogey is something that's unidentified. So, yeah, you know, he's saying that, uh, yeah, they got something out there that they, they don't know what it is. And then I've said this before. I also think that the um, the code word for UFO or alien was um, Santa Claus. So anytime if you hear in these recordings that they uh, mention Santa Claus, I believe that they're talking about uh, UFOs. which is at the same place all the time, but appears to be tumbling. Oh, well, we've had it ever since yesterday. It just seems to be tagging along with us. Yeah, see that one. They've been not, not even calling it or using code word. They're just saying alien spacecraft. But again, you know, all, all of these sightings, right? That here in in this video, right, from NASA astronauts, these are crafts 
that are seeing around planet Earth. They're not crafts that are seeing around, you know, Saturn. They're not crafts that are seeing around, you know, uh, planets around the Alpha Centauri star, right? All of these objects, all of these sightings happen around planet Earth. So does it make more sense that they're coming up out of the oceans or, you know, from deep Earth caverns? Or, you know, are they coming from these distant planets that take, you know, a gazillion light years to get here? Or, you know, they're going to have to pop through a wormhole. Or again, this, again, this, the, the notion that they're coming from the future, which I just, I don't, I don't buy this whole time travel thing, right? Yeah, what makes more sense, right? That, that, that just we have been sharing this planet with an unknown entity for all this time. And it's just, I don't know if it's, again, not everyone is, you know, isn't or is unaware of them, but uh, we've, we've always, we have a history of people who have seen, who have encountered, who have met, right? Taken rides in, in flying saucers that go, go back hundreds, thousands of years. Okay, okay, okay. See, this is what I mean, right? Here, here. If authentic, are these recordings proof that we are not alone in the universe? Now, why would they say universe? That you know, you need to cross that universe out. And this is we are not alone on this planet. This again, this is you know what I mean about the whole brainwashing and always uh, deflecting our attention away from planet Earth. You know, always to outer space. Again, all the the all the leading, you know, current leading UFO um, uh, researchers out there all do the same thing. And there's no way they 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 aren't aware that these crafts are coming from our planet. You know what I mean? There's just no way they aren't aware of that. Anyway, so you know, <clears throat> this is 15 minutes of um, of different uh, you know astronauts talking about that. So let me just go on to this next video. Well, actually, it's an article here. Here, yeah, curious phenomena in Venezuela from 1886. Let me see if I can give this thing here a read. Yeah, so this is in uh, oh, this is from Jacksonville, South Carolina, November 26, 1886. Curious phenomenon in Venezuela to the editor of the Scientific American. The following brief account of a recent strange meteorological occurrence may be of interest to your readers as an addition to the list of electrical eccentricities. During the night of the 24th of October last, which was rainy and tempestuous, tempestuous, I got to start using that word, tempestuous, uh, a family of nine persons sleeping in a hut a few leagues from Maracaibo were awakened by a loud humming noise and a vivid dazzling light, which brilliantly illuminated the interior of the house. The occupants, completely terror-stricken and believing as they relate that the end of the world had come, threw themselves on their knees and commenced to pray, but their devotions were almost immediately interrupted by violent vomitings and extensive swellings commenced to appear in the upper part of their bodies, this being particularly noticeable about the face and lips. That sounds like a radiation poisoning. Uh, it is to be noted that the brilliant light was not accompanied by a sensation of heat, although there was a smoky appearance and a peculiar smell. The next morning, the swellings had subsided, leaving upon the face and the body large black blotches. No special pain was felt until the ninth day when the skin peeled off and these blotches were transferred into virulent raw sores. The hair of the head fell off upon the side, which happened to be underneath 
when the phenomenon occurred, the same side of the body being in all nine cases, the more seriously injured. The remarkable part of the occurrence is that the house was uninjured, all doors and windows being closed at the time. No trace of lightning could afterward be observed in any part of the building, and all the suffered unite in saying that there was no detonations, but only the loud humming already mentioned. Another curious attendant circumstance is that the trees around the house showed no signs of injury until the ninth day, when they suddenly withered almost simultaneously with the development of the sores upon the bodies of the occupants in the house. Yeah, so this sounds some some type of a radiation poisoning that they went through. But again, you know, this is from 1889 or from 1886. And, you know, this is something else that, um, you know, I was, I was in one of the other call spaces. And um, this guy, Brian Johnson, was talking about how, um, you know, there are these other um, species sharing the planet with us. And they are not all at the same technological uh, uh, level as each other. He said that you know some of the some of the um, uh, civilizations are are much more advanced than the others. So you know I wonder if if like this sighting here where you know the yeah the people uh, were affected by the light. I wonder if this was like uh, uh, like more like maybe maybe it's their version of a Model T UFO. Uh, Tocha says, unimpentum come on by now should be general understanding they are time travelers. Yeah, I don't, yeah, what does unimpentum have to do with time travel? That, from, again, from what um, Bob Lazar says about the unimpentum, it, uh, when it's bombarded with um, protons, it somehow has the ability to to expand the uh, the electromagnetic force around you know, objects. So yeah, so what is and what 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 does that have to do with time travel? Yeah, so to, to me, the, the clear, here's the reason why I, I find time travel to be um impossible. Because right now, right, right now as I'm speaking, all right, let, let's okay, right now in my time zone, it's 1037, right? I or right now, we all exist in a unlimited universe right and, and and from my understanding um from the uh um what is it called the uh, the project serpo uh uh report right our universe our right our galaxy or the milky way, our milky way galaxy or the like say the universe that that our milky way galaxy exists in is just so immense Right, that, that yeah, but but at the edges of our quote unquote universe is another universe, right? So we, the reality is, is we live, we exist in a multiverse. So again, right now, as I am speaking, right, we live in a unlimited universe, and each second. Right, we keep moving further, or we keep moving into this unlimited universe. And for time travel to exist, right, this unlimited universe would have to exist someplace, right, someplace else where then, right, a machine or a craft would then have to be able to access that. Like, for instance, if I wanted to go back 30 seconds in time. Right? Does does that thirty seconds in the past, that unlimited universe, right? That that existed thirty seconds ago. That 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 I'm existing in now. We know where where does that universe exist? And let's say instead of me, you know, wanting to go back thirty seconds in the past, let's say I wanted to go back ten minutes in the past. Right? Does where again? Where where does that Because right, because because right, because of the unlimited universe that I am existing in right now, right? If I if I want to go back ten minutes in the past, well, there has to be a, this unlimited 
unlimited universe, right? Within a, again, within a multiverse that exists, you know, uh, 10 minutes ago or, 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 or five minutes ago. Yet to me, um, the universe is time, right? But the, the way we, the way humans interpret time, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a condition of, of where we exist on planet Earth, right? Because our time is based on the rotation of our planet, right, on its axis, and then the orbit of our planet around the sun. But, but time is, would be different, right, on, on planet Mars. Because, you know, yeah, because Mars or, you know, Mars or uh, rotates at a different speed on its orbit. And it all, yeah, and it also goes around the sun, you know, in, in different, in a different time scale. I mean, we, you can apply Earth time, right? You could, you could take a watch that's made on Earth and, and um, use, it on, use it on Mars. But like, for instance, the dates on Mars or, or Earth dates on Mars are irrelevant, right? Because we are, again, our time is based on uh, the amount of time that planet Earth takes to go around our sun, which is 365 days. But on Mars, right, what, what, how long does it take for Mars to uh, orbit the sun? You know, our planet, or, or I mean, our calendar does not apply on planet Mars, right? And again, and, and if, and if humans weren't around, right, how would the universe relate to time, right? The universe, okay, it, heck, out in space, space doesn't even have an up or down or left or right, right? Again, those, those conditions are, are relevant only to humans. I guess, I don't know, it's, maybe I'm going off on a rant, but anyways, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in time. To me, time is like imagine standing and standing at the edge of a river, right? And, and you're looking across a river as the water is 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 rushing by. Yeah, to me, you know, all that water rushing by the river. And okay, wh where you're standing is 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 the present moment. And and uh, you know, the water rushing by, you know, your your present moment to me is is time. It's, it's the way time moves by. So once that water right, moves by the, pre the present moment, you're never ever going to be able to bring all of those individual water molecules and atoms, right, ever, you're, you're never ever going to bring that back together, right, to, to where you are in, in, in what, you would, what you would see as the present, right, once that water goes by, it, it, it dissipates, it, it just becomes, it changes, and you're never ever going to bring that yeah, you, yeah, you know what I mean? You're never ever going to bring any of those water molecules back to a, to a particular point, point in time. I believe the higher beings can telepathically tell us about the past, but I'm, shh, I'm not sure time travel, especially going back, would exist. I, but I do believe higher beings have all the... Yeah, again, you know, and, and um, uh, again, my assessment, right, of, of time, the way I'm seeing time, again, is I'm using my human brain. So, again, I, I could be completely wrong, you know. It's, you know someone used the analogy of, um, of, of, a, you know, of a cat and a dog running around a library, right? I mean, all that knowledge, right, is in, is in that library, is in those books. But a cat and a dog have no idea, right, how to assess the knowledge contained in those books. They're just running around a library. And again, you know, I, I, as as a as a measly, meager little human being with my with my little monkey brain, you know, I, yeah, that's you know, yeah, I'm, I'm using my monkey brain in order to try and and um, and um, explain this thing called time, which to me is like trying to get a uh, asking or, or yeah, trying to or expecting an orangutan to explain geometry. Right. That's I, I kind of feel like an orangutan trying to explain geometry or, you know, when I'm trying to explain time. But but anyways, that's my rant. Let's go on to this next. Um, this next article here.
bizarre cases of military encounters with strange aquatic humanoids. Again, you know, this goes back. We're we are not the only sentient beings on the planet. Even within the Homo sapien, right, or the yeah, the sapien um, species, we you know there are multiple species. We have Homo capensis that are that walk amongst us. You know, these are the people with the elongated skulls. Um, uh, we have the little little the little six inch dudes. You know, like the uh, the Atacama alien, which uh, what's his name, Gary Nolan. You know, wants to claim is not or is a human. Which is ridiculous, right? Six inch uh, humans. Give me a break. Anyways, um, let me read this here. The world can be a very strange place, and there have always been tales and reports of encounters with strange humanoids. There is one corner of this weirdness that seems to get compartmentally little coverage, comparatively little coverage, and that is that of bizarre encounters with odd aquatic entities by military personnel. These are trained military men who have come across weird things beneath the waves for which their training has not prepared them for. Here we will look at an assortment of such cases of seeming aquatic humanoids that stumped military personnel. Now, you know, I wonder if they're going to get into this thing. Um, uh, let's see. I know that, yeah, here's the story about uh, Russia's Lake Bacow, right? Another very strange account of encounters with underwater humanoids supposedly happened at Russia's Lake Bacal in 1982. Navy divers in the lake on a training exercise reported coming across unknown human-like organisms swimming about at a depth of around 164 feet. The huge humanoids were described as beings around 10 feet tall and wearing some sort of skin-tight silver suit and round helmets on their heads. When the divers tried to pursue the creatures in order to catch one of them, they fought back, and three of the Russian divers purportedly died as a result. So here, so this is where I don't believe. Imagine you're a diver. Okay, I don't care. Russian, right? The Russians are not superheroes. Okay, they're not. They're not Aquaman, right? If you're a human being, and you're underwater, about a hundred feet of water, and you encounter ten feet tall humanoids. Your first thought is let's catch it? No, no, no. See, that's to me, that goes completely against human nature, right? I know for me, if I'm down under the water and I got, you know, I'm in, I'm in a wetsuit, you know, breathing apparatus in my mouth. If I encounter something that can get me out of that fucking water, right? As soon as quick, I'm not thinking, oh yeah, let's catch it. So this is why I don't, yeah, I, I doubt this, this idea. It's ridiculous that these Russian divers are going to be that far down. Again, you know, it, it, the, you're, you're in underwater. It's already mysterious. It's already creepy. I don't care how much experience you have. If you encounter some aquatic humanoid creature underwater, you want to get the fuck out of there. You're not going to be, oh, let's catch it. That's what you talk about all the time, Barb. They're they're here. They live in the water and on the land. While they're finally admitting and seeing them, yeah. But again, I I still don't believe the story, though. You know, there's I don't doubt that they're here. But this idea that that these navy divers tried to catch them is just that's that's nonsense. There would be there would not be the only alleged giant underwater humans to be spotted in Russian lakes, and they were supposedly reported from all over remote waters at the time. Indeed, that very same year, there was a training exercise of reconnaissance divers going on at Isek Kul Lake, a frigid deep lake in the uh, Transilic Alator area. This mission was supposedly actually warned about what had happened at Baikal by a Major General V. Demienko, commander of the military diver center, blah, 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 blah. Such stories were further fueled by an account from a D. Bor of the cough, who came across such enormous underwater humanoids while diving in the Black Sea to hunt sharks in 1996. He claimed that as he was diving at a depth of around eight meters in the Anapa area, he was terrified to see a group of massive humanoid creatures around three meters in length ascending from a blow. They were described as being milky white in color with human-like faces, but fish, but tails like fish. The entity in front supposedly saw 
Baravikov and stopped to stare with bulging frog-like eyes and another passed while waving with a webbed hand. The whole group approached until they were unsettlingly close before suddenly darting off into the murk. Whatever these cases Whatever these cases are describing, these accounts and more have been covered in some depth in a book by ufologists Paul Stonehill and Philip Mantel called Russia's USO Secrets, The Unidentified Submersible Object in Russian and International Waters. Yeah. Now, again, I, I don't doubt that, you know, that there are beings um, that are out there. I remember also listening to a, an episode of Joe Rogan where one of his um, guests talks about, um, I think he was in... Um, Malta. He talked about he was in Malta and uh, him and someone else had, um, they were coming back from a bar or something. And he talks about how he saw some type of giant humanoid swimming in the waters. And uh, the next morning, um, he he asked the, uh, I think it was the owner of a restaurant or the owner of the hotel. Again, I don't remember the story precisely. But anyways, this, per or he, he had mentioned well, this guy was a local, and he had mentioned, you know, to the local that he saw this this uh, uh, aquatic humanoid, and the local said, "Yeah, it's, you know, we we know about those things, but we don't talk about it because um, we, you know, we don't want uh, we don't want to scare the tourists." So, um, yeah, so there's definitely these these things out there. Anyways, um, article will be in the uh, description uh, when I finish doing this live stream now. Uh, the last article here, this is XCI officer, truth about UFOs is terrifying and interdimensional beings are within us. Now, this is about um, uh, Jim Semivan. And I think they also mentioned John Ramirez in this uh, story here. But yeah, but Jim Semivan, you know, is one of these former, I mean, he's, again, he's CIA. So, um, you know, he's a professional liar, but still, I think you know some of these guys are or ha have been given the uh, the green light to reveal some information. But let me read this what he says here. Now, again, now this is he's basically saying something very similar to what you know Lou Elizondo has said, which is that there's this entity that's living around us that just we we aren't aware of. So let me give this here a read. A few months ago, former CIA officer Jim Semivan made a shocking statement saying there's a whole other reality that surrounds us that we simply don't have the ability to see or interact with. He had worked with the CIA for 25 years before joining Tom DeLong's To The Stars Academy with other ex-government insiders. The To The Stars Academy is an organization that claims to have been responsible for the release of the now famous Pentagon UFO videos. Uh, let's see. Let's see. He, according to him, there is a force out there that can control our environment, that can put thoughts into our heads. In fact, Mr. Semivan has previously stated that UFOs sighted by the Navy are from another world. He made shocking assertions regarding unidentified flying objects in an interview with James uh, Iandoli, saying that the occurrences can be stated startling, especially to children. Uh, when we started TSA, we had discussed we had discussions about this all the time. Are you sure we want to disclose this information? I mean, you know, we're going. No, see, this is so stupid that they're going to scare eight year old kids. Eight year old kids don't know to be scared of these things. Uh, it says yes, there is a force out there that can control our environment and put thoughts into our heads that they can lie to you, deceive you, and that they are, and that you are not in control of your life. That sounds like our government. Uh, tell that to a 12 year old. While succinct, some events suggest that the rabbit hole goes much deeper when it comes to the UFO phenomenon. Uh, moreover, in his recent podcast appearance on Calling All Beings, he fiercely said that non-human intelligence is living with humans on earth. There's an entity out there. There's some kind of non-human intelligence that living with us this fucking on this fucking planet. Yes. Yeah, so again, Jim Simavan is also CAA acknowledging that we are not alone on this planet. Semivan spoke about his own experiences with alien-like beings that started happening to him and his wife in their bedroom in 1990 on Coast to Coast AM. He insisted that the event was real and that it was not a hypno 
hypnagiotic or dream state. The couple thereafter had intermittent poltergeist activity in their home. And more recently, he claimed to have seen a hooded figure that resembled the Death Eater from the Harry Potter series who perhaps materialized to herald the death of a close friend. Yeah, you know, I wonder if, um, again, when, when people see, you know, like a, a, a hooded figure, if that is just these beings uh, manipulating our perception to see those things. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, I've seen enough videos of, um, of beings that seem to be cloaked by some kind of invisibility shield. Um, yeah, there, yeah, there's 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 videos out there where you can, you know, again, these are like uh, security cams or they're like, t you know, taken on cheap phones where there's no way someone would have been able to manipulate or use um, some type of um, uh, third party uh, software, you know, to to manipulate this footage. But yeah, I've seen stuff where you can not clearly see, but it seems to indicate that, you know, there is some type of a uh, humanoid. Um, that's trying to hide themselves with some type of cloaking device. But anyways, uh, that's it. My first, um, my first live stream from being back from my um, my uh, restriction or whatever you want to call it. You, my YouTube jail. I'm free, but you know whatever. Uh, I'm gonna start going, going going back to putting these things out again. How you doing, Monica? Um, uh, glad you guys are back. Uh, but you know, I, I've been collecting up a lot of things. Um, yeah, collecting up a lot of uh, new, you know, footage. But you know, again, it's it's go back to what I'm saying. It's it, you know, this information is coming out there more and more. You don't people don't have to wait for the government to disclose. The information is out there. We aren't alone on the planet. Um, we aren't the only hominid or the only intelligent species, sentient species on the planet. There's there's life all around us. Bigfoot's real. There's aliens in the oceans, and uh, and we're surrounded by a bunch of uh, brainwashed sheep. But anyways, that's it. Thanks for showing up. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, I'll be doing some more videos. You know, I I may even do another video tomorrow because uh, yeah, I want to just start catching up and um, getting my, my my numbers back up again. But anyways, you all take care.